Before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you Aqua for being the main sponsor of today's YouTube video. Aqua is a test management system that can drastically save time for testers, developers and their managers. One of the standout features of Aqua is its ability to provide a comprehensive view of requirement coverage for each user story. Picture this, you're working on a project with multiple user stories and requirements. With Aqua, you can effortlessly keep track of requirement coverage for each user story. It's like having a bird's eye view of your entire testing process, empowering you to prioritize your backlog effectively. But here's the real magic, Aqua's ability to organize test cases into test scenarios and reuse them. This feature alone, alone will save you countless of hours of repetitive work. Plus, Aqua allows you to plug in your automation tools and then set up and run automated tests directly within the tool, which is super convenient. I know firsthand how hard it can be to juggle many testing tools at once. That's why I find this functionality pretty helpful. But, re but what really caught my attention is Aqua's AI Assistant. We all know that writing test cases can be tedious and time consuming. Aqua AI Assistant can create a comprehensive test case from either your requirement or short te test case description. Or you can even simply dictate your idea using voice and Aqua will generate a requirement and test case for your verification. It's like having an extra pair of hands to help us out. In addition, Aqua has excellent defect management functionality, flexible dashboards and reports that can be shared with any member of your team. And yes, Aqua supports full synchronization with Jira. So if your team uses Jira, you can use Aqua as an add-on for your test management. So if you're looking to optimize your testing process, I highly recommend you to give Aqua a try. You can start with a free trial version just today and I will leave the link in the description below. Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. My name is Daniel Knott and I'm happy that you're here today. You have read it already in the video title. Today is about how much coding is required as a software tester. And I bet you have heard all the things already like, let's automate all the things, right? I mean, let's be honest, we all have been there, right? I mean, I have seen it in my, my careers as a software tester so many times that people were telling me like, hey, Daniel, let's automate all the things. We need coding skills as a software tester. You need to be able to, to write in language A, B, C, and D in order to make it successful, a successful project. It's all on you. I mean, to be honest, we heard about it. And partially I'm also sick of it because people who usually say that, that we need to automate all the things or that software testers need to be able to, to code and to have all the programming skills available, they have no idea about testing, right? Testing is so much more than just coding and doing something and writing automated checks. It's much more than, than you think. And that's the today's video all about, right? I would like to talk about how much coding is required as a software tester and what are other things that you can do in order to add value to your project. So let's take a look. From my point of view, there are no coding skills required to get into the testing market and the testing mindset and also to land your first testing job. Because I think that manual or let's call it testing is um, such a fundamental thing to learn without coding skills or without programming skills because you need to know the the, the foundations. Yeah, So that's what I meant with manual testing is important. You need to learn the fundamentals and the foundations of modern software testing like what is important to do in order to yeah, add value to your team. What are, is about risk storming, asking the right questions and learning about the product and so forth and so forth. So we come to that in a second again. So I think that it's, m testing is very important and manual, that's what I put it into, into um, the quotation marks, is, is very important and it's, but it's so much important to really get the fundamentals. And I recently had a coworker who that was just out of university and said, okay, I would like to automate. I would just don't do anything else to automate. And yeah, he was really unhappy when he got his first job and his first project and there was no automation required because it was a pure manual work to do. And he was kind of, no, I don't want to do it. Uh, and he moved on. So that's okay. 
he had a completely wrong perception from testing. And I think this is also partially um, a problem from maybe universities or from other companies or people who hire software testers with no testing background. They think that only if you can do coding, you're a good tester, but that's wrong. We all know it, or hopefully you know it. And in case you are such a person who will think like that, uh, make up your mind, connect with the testing community, learn from us, and then you know that testers can add much more value to a product, to a company, to a team, um, and without writing a single line of code. Yeah. So there's more to know. First of all, I think it's important to understand the business industry you're working in. So in case you're working in the automotive section or in the health industry or whatever, become an not not I would not say become an expert but learn about the the important topics in that industry what are standards what is a common thing what are pitfalls what are things to do what are things not to do and then also to yeah to connect with those people maybe find experts in the field and and learn from them and to understand everything that is needed for you as a software tester in order to test the application yeah so the second thing, and I think I, you heard it a trillion of times, is learn everything about the customers. Even myself, when I go on conferences and talk about mobile testing or other testing aspects, is you should be you should put yourself in the shoes of the customer. So really take this customer position and ask yourself, like, or ask some business people in the company, like, what is the problem that we would like to solve for that customer, and is there really a problem that we have to solve? And always keep the customers in mind because. They don't care in the end if you have written 200 automated checks that run perfectly in the CI CD pipeline and you have 10,000 of unit tests and stuff like that. If the application is not running, your tests are worthless, right? So that's why keep keep motivated and, and try to be uh, close as possible to the customer. The third point, of course, you should learn everything about the product. Yeah, this is close, closely connected to the first point to say, okay, learn everything about the business or industry they're working in. But in case you are, uh, you're working in a company that has already an established product, talk to product experts, to customer care experts, to the product managers, other internal stakeholders, marketing sales, to learn all about your product, about the tech stack, about um, the history of the product and so forth and so forth because that knowledge is so much valuable for you as a software tester because the moment you know every everything about your product you know where to put your fingers into in order to find issues to ask for risk related topics and so forth and so forth so that's why be a product expert and last but not least, of course, you should know, but not only you, but this is also something you can tell like software developers, for example, that they should know about the business, the customers, the, the product and so forth and so forth. But also the fourth point here is to know about the business values and the goals and the risks. Yeah. So what is the goal of that product that you're working on for your company, for the customer, and then bring everything together because that knowledge, as I said, is such more, such, such more valuable than just writing automated checks and be isolated in your code base and just you know have a blind spot and do coding without looking around what's going to happen around you, your team, other teams, and try to connect these topics. Yeah? So that's important. And of course, you, have, you can improve your skills as a tester. And of course, there is some partially coding involved, but not only. Yeah, so let's see. Um, learning a programming language can be a logical next step. That's what I always tell my uh, juniors or like trainees that come into the company that I'm working for. Um, first, get the fundamentals right. So do like learn everything about modern um, testing concepts, exploratory testing, uh, BDD, all these techniques that are out there. So learn about the concepts and try to understand everything, like how the application is working and so forth and so forth. And then the next logical step can be to learn a programming language. But it doesn't, it doesn't need to be like the next step, but one of the next steps. Because it, of course it helps you to, to be able to write some code to write some test data um, scripts that can generate some test data for you. Or you can write some automated checks, um, being API, end-to-end -end UI, 
unit tests, you name it, tests, whatever you would like to automate, it can help, can be helpful, but it's not the most important thing and skill that you have to learn. Uh, second thing, and I will open up this thing, is learn how to use tools that assist your testing activities. Yeah, I mean, there are so many tools that you can use there, and I just put out like a free, three of the tools here. So you can use a proxy tool, a pipelining tool, or a database tool that is not, you can, of course, you can use it for automation, but uh, you can use the tool as, a, as an assistant, yeah? Or ChatGPT and all these AI topics that are flying around it these days. But for example, the proxy tool um, that is really helpful for every tester that is working on a web, mobile, or I don't know, API product, because the proxy tool will give you detailed insights on request responses, error codes, and so forth and so forth. That's so valuable. Uh, such a valuable tool that you can just open up on a second or third screen depending on your setup and it, it gives you valuable insights and can lead to new testing ideas and testing activities while you perform software testing. Same for goes for pipelining tools or database tools and some others that are out there. And last but not least, not least, uh, or the next thing is learn about the tech stacks. Yeah. So is it in, what is the product technology that you're working in? Is it like a, a mobile application? So what is the backend architecture? What is the database technology? Um, how is the API um, written? In which programming language? What, what technology? Is it GraphQL? Is it pure REST? And these kind of stuff. How is the mobile app developed? Is it a native uh, Kotlin or Swift or is it a Flutter application, hybrid mobile web app? So this is all knowledge that you should collect and maybe you can do a mind map or something like that to, to gather this information in your mind or in, in a board somewhere shared with your team. And this will help you, of course, again, to mitigate risks, to find bottlenecks in your tech stack or to also make a function map out of the application and say, okay, look, that's the section where I, that I have never touched. Who tested that before? Is it covered by a unit test, for example, or not? In case nobody has ever tested it, that's the perfect spot for you to start. So on this, this um, knowledge about the tech stack helps you a lot in order to bring value to your customers and your product team. And last but not least, I mean, we have heard it a billion of times is like the soft skills, like communication, analytical and people skills, yes. This is, I, I would even put it on top of that list and on top of everything, because whenever I work with customers, with teams, whenever there is an issue, it usually boils down to bad communication. Yeah? It doesn't need to be like intentional bad communication, but it can also be people make mistakes. We make mistakes. I make mistakes uh, every day. You know, it's like we are human. That's, that's totally fine, but we have to learn from them and adapt. And communication is such an important topic to, to learn to how to communicate problems, how to communicate bad things, good things, how to, to change the tone of voice when you're talking to, uh, let's say, business people, stakeholders or developers. So this is important. Analytical skills are important to have as well, because you can go into data mining or data analytics and find out like why is the user journey breaking up here and why is nobody going on that section to find out things about that. Maybe you can pair up with your product manager on that topic to learn more about like analytics and how to look on a uh, into a product from that, that point of view. And last but not least, yeah, people skills. I mean, learn to know how to work with different kind of people. I mean, there are people that are outgoing, you know, like talking a lot, sharing knowledge, but they're also like these introverts, people like that, that like to hide, you know, like I'm a really silent person. So really tiny and somewhere in, 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 a, in a border and, but brilliant people, but they don't like to talk and, you know, to share. But it's again, important to have this kind of, um, let's say feeling for people, like how to contact them, when is the best way to contact them and when not. And this will help you a lot in improving your skills as a tester because we are talking to so many different people out there. Um, learning resources. So in case you would like to improve uh, uh, your skills, I mean, there's the testing community is full of great people talking and sharing about knowledge. I mean, there are conferences and so forth and so forth. And here are just some, some bullets that you can f follow up on in case you would like to know more information about those 
send me a message, I'm happy to share more of them. Of course, there are books on testing, but there are not only books on software testing, there are also books on software development and programming languages and coding patterns and communication and whatever. So if you're a book person, go ahead, use your favorite search engine and ask for a specific book that you would like to read and go for it. Videos, yes, videos like this. Hi, <laughs> welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, videos, there are a lot of cool videos out there, not only on YouTube, but also on um, but also on other channels like uh, Udemy, for example, or um, some uh, social media networks like LinkedIn or Twitter or something like that. So you can find videos where you can learn stuff about. Um, there are courses. I mentioned already the Udemy courses, for example, but also the Ministry of Testing. They have a, f a really great set of courses uh, where you can learn testing in, in different aspects. I mean, there's the Test Automation University and there's more stuff that you can uh, explore and to learn from in order to improve your skills, depending on what you would like to improve, of course. And yeah, I mentioned already a couple of times, I guess, today and in other videos, communities. We have a great testing community. Go and connect with other fellow testers and exchange on how to improve your skills, attend conferences, connect with people, and then you will find like-minded people, but also people who you know that are experts in some specific field that you can maybe connect with and ask questions and to learn from it. Yeah, and that's what I can also say. Go out and talk to people. It's helpful. And that's it. That's the video for today. I hope this what this was really helpful for you. What do you think about the the term or the, the like the, the video title? Like, do testers need to be able to write code? Is our coding skills required? Leave it in the comment section below. I would love to hear your your feedback, your comments on that topic. What was you? What have you been your experience with uh, with software testers should be able to code? Happy to find out. As always, leave a thumbs up or leave a subscription. Thank you for coming by today. Bye-bye and see you.